So today is our first lesson on electromagnetism. And there's quite a few things I'm going to teach you about, some basics about uh, magnetism and electromagnetism, like the motor principle. And I'm going to show you how a, a DC motor works. Remember, DC stands for direct current. Um, there's no math problems today. All this information is on your handout. But I'm going to use uh, my PowerPoint to go through it in sort of in order in steps. But you can use your handout to follow along. All right, so first, magnetism. Similar to charges where you'd have, um, say, opposite charges attract and like charges repel, uh, magnetism is the same thing. But instead of having a positive and negative, we have a north and a south. They follow the same rules. Uh, two north poles will repel, right here. And opposite poles, like north and south, will attract. The same would be true if we had two south poles, they would repel. So there's some rules for magnetism. Uh, next is magnetic fields. So you have a magnetic field, it'll go outwards like this on a magnet. So if you were to place uh, compasses around that magnet, notice that the compass, even though the compass itself says it's always pointing north, it's actually pointing to the south magnetic pole. So compasses always point south. I know you're probably thinking, what? No, you've completely lost it now, Mr. French. You know, it's like, no, I haven't. Um, this is what people find confusing, because if you've done any survival course, you know compasses always point north, but they don't. So Earth has uh, different poles. You have the geographic, or the, um, yeah, the geographic north and south poles. So the Earth is slightly tilted on an axis and it rotates. That rotational axis points to our geographic north and south pole. However, the magnetic pole looks something more like this, where this is magnetic south and this is magnetic north. So the magnetic south pole is very close to our geographic north pole. And from where, from a, from, um, say Toronto or Newmarket, that's about, um, 10 degrees off. So when you're looking at a compass and it's telling you where north is, it's actually telling you where a, a magnetic south is, which is only about 10 degrees off from geographic north. And that's good enough for most of our purposes. Now, Orsted is, um, is a physicist who did an experiment that was, um, quite shocking. And people around the world were starting to look at this experiment, trying to figure out what's going on. So here's the experiment. You have a compass, place it near a wire. And now let's say the compass is pointing towards the Earth's uh, magnetic south pole. And we orient it so that our experiment has that wire parallel to the compass. Then if you turn the current on, so, oh, so if you um, attach a power source, so you have a current going through the wire, the compass needle then points perpendicular to the wire every single time. People found this very confusing because you couldn't see anything. There was nothing between the wire and the compass that would have caused that interaction. Now, today we know that this is caused by fields, thanks to Michael Faraday. So, um, a sorry, magnetism. Magnetism will emit a magnetic fields. And if you have a current moving through a wire, it also creates magnetic fields. Okay, and there's a rule to figure out the direction of those magnetic fields. So we've talked in a previous les lesson about the difference between electron flow and conventional current. Now again, we're pretty much going to use conventional current. So for conventional current, we have something called the right-hand rule. Now I can't see all of you, so I'm going to imagine, and hopefully you follow, that you put up your right hand. Okay, based on the video, I don't, this might be a mirror image, so it might look a bit confusing, but put up your right hand, and then put your thumb in the direction of the current. Okay, I think my image is mirrored, so I'm just going to do this. And then 
curl your fingers. The direction your fingers curl show you the direction of the magnetic field around that wire. It's called the right hand rule. Um, if you prefer electron flow, no problem, just use your left hand. Okay, but I'm going to pretty much uh, talk about the right hand rule. Next, solenoids. Solenoids is where you just take a, um, a wire and you coil it around some sort of cylindrical object. That's called a solenoid. Sometimes we just call it a coil. Now, if you were to put um, a current through that solenoid, you'll actually get a magnetic field going through the center of that solenoid. And you can figure out the direction of that. Right? Again, um, take your right hand. And this time, we're going to curl our fingers in the direction um, that the current is moving around that solenoid. And then your thumb is going to point in the direction that the magnetic field is pointing through the center of the solenoid. So it's those two right hand rules sort of go together. All right. Next, the motor principle. So let's say we have uh, these two magnets. Now these two magnets are created in a magnetic field that go from north to south. So there's a magnetic field going through this wire. And I've indicated in this diagram with um, the symbol capital B. Capital B represents magnetic field. Makes sense, right? <laughs> Just like I represents current. So if you did put a current through the wire, it's going to feel a force. Why does it feel a force? Well, we've talked about if you put a current through the wire, it's going to have its own magnetic field around the wire. And so that magnetic field interacting with the magnetic field you've put it in due to those magnets will cause a force. To figure out the direction of that force, you're going to once again uh, take your right hand, because we're talking about conventional current, your fingers, will point in the direction of the magnetic field, so um, north to south. <laughs> this is very confusing with a mirror image that I'm working with here. So north to south. And then your thumb will point in the direction of the current. It's probably easier just to look at this picture. So your fingers are pointing north to south. Your thumb is pointing in the direction of the current, which in this case is coming out of your screen. And the force is directly uh, perpendicular to your palm. So in this example here, there's a force on that wire going up. Right? Now, I'm going to go back one slide. I'm just going to mention one more thing that we'll talk about later. Uh, but I've talked about how um, you can have currents or moving charges. That's what current is, moving charges, uh, create a magnetic field. Now the opposite is true. You can also have a moving magnetic field create a current. So if you were to take a magnet, if you had no current going through this solenoid and you were to take a magnet and put it through um, the solenoid, it would generate a current in the wire. It's very important. It has to always be moving. A current is always moving. So if you put a magnet through it and then left it inside at rest, it's no longer creating a current. It always has to be moving. And you can do that in a couple ways. You can move it in and out, or you can spin it inside. And we'll talk about more about that when I teach you in the next lesson how our electrical grid works and how we actually generate electricity. Uh, but for now, we're going to sort of use this motor principle here that I've described to explain how a DC motor works. So let's look at the parts of a DC motor first. Okay, so we have the stator. This is just... um something that provides a magnetic field. You could have a coil with a current going through it, or you can have permanent magnets. Right? You just need something that provides a magnetic field. Then you have your armature. This is a loop here that's free to rotate. And we have our commutator. This is right here, this circular ring, and it has a split in it. That split is very, very important, and we'll talk about that in a moment. 
Then you need a power source to somehow attach to the ring, but you don't want the you don't want it spinning with the ring because the ring is going to spin. Uh, so you have sort of a brush, right? and the brush just touches the ring, uh, but doesn't spin with it as it moves. All right, so in this first example, let's say we hook up a power source and we're going to follow conventional currents. So let's go from the positive end. The positive end goes here, through here. So right here from A to B, it's going from A to B, and then it goes around and it goes from C to D. Now we have a current inside of a magnetic field. This is going to feel a force due to the motor principle we just talked about. So let's focus on this segment, AB. So we have a magnetic field going from uh, right to left. And then we have a current. If we look at this, I have indicated the current here with a circle with an X through it. That just means the current's going into the page. A circle with an X means into the page. If you had a circle with a dot, that means coming out of the page. A good way to remember that is I like to think of archery because I love archery. So if you saw an arrow coming out of your screen, you would see that point on the tip. But if the arrow was going into the screen, uh, you'd see the back of that arrow and the fletchers or the feathers on the back creating that X. So we have a current going into the screen. So now you can take your right hand, put your fingers in the direction of the magnetic field B, put your thumb in the direction of the current, and your palm will be facing up. That means this segment wants to rotate in this direction. Well, what about CD? CD, we have the current going from C to D. So that means it's coming out of your screen. With the magnetic field in this direction, the force is down if you apply your right hand rule. So it wants to continue moving clockwise, just like AB wants to continue moving clockwise. So the whole thing's going to spin clockwise. All right. As it moves clockwise, eventually it will reach this position. Now, this position, um, you have your current going in this direction and your magnetic field in this direction. So you could use your right hand rule, but we don't really want anything to happen here. And the reason is, is because we want to switch the direction of the current. And to do that, that's where these little holes in our ring comes in. So because we have holes in our ring, at some point, um, the brushes won't touch the ring. And so the current gets cut off. And this is where that happens. And so there's no more current going through here. So there's no more force acting on the ring. But because of its own momentum or inertia, it continues to spin a little bit until it gets to this point. Now this is very, very important. Notice I've switched where C and D and A and B are. If we did not switch the direction of current after this whole thing flipped one half of a rotation, AB would be on this side with the current going into the page, which would change the direction of force. So that means initially it would move clockwise and then after half a rotation, it would want to move counterclockwise and then clockwise and counterclockwise and clockwise. That's not what we want. We want a complete rotation. So what that means is after we rotate half a rotation, in order to keep that force moving it clockwise, we need to switch the direction of the current. And that's what the holes in the ring do. So right now you have the positive terminal attached right here to where our AB is. But after half a rotation, we now have the positive terminal here attached to DC. And so we have um, a current going from D to C instead of before, which was C to D. And we have a current going from B to A instead of before, which was A to B. 
and you can test your right hand rules and it's going to continue to go clockwise and this will just then keep repeating over and over and over and over again and that's how a DC motor works. Thank you.